Welcome back to Penn Central 99's channel. On this session, we're going to talk about programming CDs. Some of the things that you're going to need is a device that's run by a DCC decoder. You're going to need a command station or other programming feature for your decoder. Plus, some other helpful things are operator's manuals. Uh, I have a binder that contains the operator's manuals of the DCC equipment that I use. You can see here, since I have a Digitrax command station, I've got the operator's manual for that. It helps guide me through brain farts to get me going and started. Uh, since I have soundtrack tsunamis for my decoders, I also have uh, programming guides for the CVs from the manufacturer, which helps out quite a bit. Now, some of the other things that are going to come in handy, especially since I just bought that uh, SD70 ACE from Apple, is the operator's guide from them. In the back section here, if you've never operated DCC before, there's a section on DCC. It helps guide you through it. But for more experienced uh, operators, especially with uh, DCC, it contains the CV settings that were preset from the factory before they were shipped out. Now to me this is very helpful because I know what the starting points are for the CVs and where I need to go to get the locomotive to operate the way I want it to. Now some of you might be saying, why do you need binders, especially in today's electronic age and everything on the internet or on your computer? Yeah, that's true. There's no doubt about that. Uh, who needs paper? But I prefer it sometimes. Yes, I have these documents in files on my computer for reference, but at the same token, I can thumb through these pages faster than I can look for things on my computer. So it's very helpful in finding things when I need it. Okay, to start things off, and I'm going to recommend that you create a graph or a uh, spreadsheet or something so you can keep track of your CV program. We see here, I have all my locomotive roster on this uh, spreadsheet. And what I did is I write down and document the CV settings for each. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, it makes it easier to program future locomotives. And two, if something ever happens that you need to reset your decoder back to the factory settings um, to get it to perform or start, you know, it, there, it's an electronic device. Things go wrong. But it's a nice thing to reference to and you can go back to. Um, most of my locomotives are GP38s or GP40s, so the program um, setting on the CVs is very similar. But then again, on my switchers, like my S3s and my S2s, they're a little bit different. So I can keep track of those CV settings on this spreadsheet. Now, not every CV gets programmed, but the ones that I do get programmed get written down. So I've got a column here set up for Loco 1073, which is my Penn Central Heritage SD70 ACE, and we're going to go ahead and get started on that program. Okay, let's go ahead and get started by uh, energizing the command station. Uh, you see I have locomotive 1073 already pulled up, so that's the one we're going to program. Uh, there's several different ways you can program CVs. I use the ops programming or on the main programming. So what we want to do is we want to go to our program mode. See it's already in the ops, but you can toggle through the page, uh, physical, direct, or ops programming. Like I say, programming on the main, you need the ops mode of the programming. And as I threatened before, one of the first thing I'm going to do is change the volume because that is way loud. Now, according to the manual, come from the factory preset at 230. So I'm going to change the master volume, which is CV128. So I'm going to go to CV128. I'm going to write that to, and I set mine to 100. So 100. Now, when I write that, watch the locomotive. It'll lurch and move forward, um, indicating that it's accepting the commands. And did you hear the volume go down automatically? So we now have the volume programmed to about 100, which still seems to be a little bit loud, but at least it's a start. So I'm going to exit out of that programming mode, and now we don't need to listen to the volume for the rest of the CV programming. So I'm just going to mute that and turn that off.
Uh, one of the things we want to program is the uh, CV2, the acceleration, and CV4, the braking, because if you notice, it kind of has a jackrabbit start for forward and reverse. It comes preset from the factory. So we like need that. to uh, program those and turn them a little bit so we have more realistic acceleration and uh, braking. <clears throat> CV3, which is acceleration, uh, comes from the factory set at zero. So I'm going to program mine to um, 100. So let's go to CV3. CV3. And like I say, I set mine to 100. I'm going to write that. The locomotive lurch forward so it appears that it's took it. Exit out of there. Do CV4 the braking CV4 and I usually set mine to 25 CV4 25 so now my acceleration and braking should be changed so let's go ahead and check it I turn up my throttle See, I'm almost at speed setting 2 on my uh, throttle, and did you notice that uh, the acceleration was greatly, greatly more realistic? So let's back up. See how much more realistic that is? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the volume so you can kind of get an idea of uh, how we change the CV setting, especially for acceleration so you can hear the sound and see the locomotive at the same time. Now, when I turn up the, uh, the dial here on my command station, I'm going to do it pretty rapidly, but the locomotive is going to respond slowly based on the CV setting for acceleration, which is CV3. I've got that turned up quite a bit. Okay, one of the other things I like to automatically program are the CVs to set is uh, the automatic sound controls. Okay, obviously railroad rules dictate that when a locomotive moves forward, they need to sound the horn. When it goes in reverse or backs up, they need to sound the horn. Plus when they stop, they gotta sound the horn. Plus also there are speed limits or yard limits in certain functions that they can only travel so fast and when they're in the yards, they need to sound their bell to warn people. Uh, so one of the nice things about uh, tsunamis or soundtracks is you can program one CV and have all that taken care of. So what we're going to do is we're going to do CV198, which is the uh, digital mode automatic sound configuration, which is going to set the automatic grade crossing, the automatic horn for forward and reverse, the automatic bell for certain speeds, and the automatic brake control. So let's go ahead and go to our operation mode programming. We're going to go to CV198. Okay, and we're going to program 198 to 15, which that comes out of the soundtrack's uh, owner's manual or operator's manual for programming automatic sounds. Now we can go program our bell set points for our start and stop with CV193. I set for one. So as soon as I turn the throttle on, the bell is going to sound. I set CV, oops, I'm sorry, CV194, which is the bell off, for 15. So when I get above 10 scale mile hours, it will automatically shut off. So my automatic um, sound configuration is set. So let's go ahead and look at that. There's the bell and the horn. Okay, we stop one, two. We're going to back up. Automatic bell. Three toots for going in reverse. Now, when I get above 10 scale mile hours, the bell is automatically going to shut off. 
So that's pretty simple. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, check out our CV settings on the track. Uh, a couple of things are going to happen. We're going to move forward at a slow speed. Uh, the automatic bell is going to come on. The horn is going to sound because we're going forward. And the engine should throttle up just about the same time it moves forward. That seems to be a realistic uh, forward motion. Okay, now we're going to go back and get a, a more realistic speed. Well, that pretty much does it for this session. I hope you learned something by watching this video. The main thing is programming CVs is not that difficult and it's a really nice way to customize your locomotive in this case to operate it the way you want it to. Well, as always, thanks for watching.